Does anyone have a question? Somebody's got to have a question. I have a question. Does anyone have a question? Um, Stuart, could you talk about misogyny? Misogyny? Mm -hmm. Look, uh, I don't know, I'm not an expert on misogyny, but look, anyone who is a misogynist, anyone who hates women, women, or torture women, I mean, the person is basically crazy. The person is very sick, you know, and they're angry. And whatever the reasons for their anger, uh, I don't know. I mean, has to do maybe their mother beat them when they were young. I don't know what their reasons for. But it's a sick person. It's a person who truly, you know, uh, inside themselves is so unhappy, and you know that they will that they'll take out their anger, their insecurity, their unhappiness on a woman. The same thing with racism. It's the exact same thing, you know. People have to find an excuse to vent their anger. And these things like being a female, being, you know, uh, African-American, being black or brown or yellow or whatever, you know, they're right on the surface and they're very easy for people to find fault with. You know, you can look at any human being and in five seconds find 10 things wrong with them. You know, and uh, and one of the quickest things is a person's race, their religion, their, and it's been literally uh, you know, a cause of so much violence and death and unhappiness and, in this world. And I don't have an answer for it. I do have an answer for it. But go go get up on some soapbox and tell people, you know, that they got to open their hearts, they got to love, they got to understand, you know, that because somebody's a little bit different, it shouldn't make them angry. They should say, well, what can I learn from this person? What does that person have to teach me? So I don't know. I, I don't know the answer to that, Christine. I mean, it's a crazy thing. And and I understand it's a very real problem in the world. And it can be resolved. If people want to do some profound inner work, they want to open deeply in themselves, if they want to open their hearts, if they want to build foundation and grow in themselves, you know, uh, there's no room for misogyny to exist inside them. It doesn't exist. You know, they find the goodness in the... And even if a person isn't good, they find, well, what can this person teach me about myself? And, I mean, that's really the problem. The problem is that people don't work on themselves. They sit in judgment of other people and they haven't uh, any kind of stupid idea about what is really going on in the world, except they judge people by superficialities. And they try to enslave people, they try to put people down, they try to control people. And the only reason for it is they're so deeply unhappy in themselves that that's the only way they can approach other human beings. And they don't do anything to fix it. They don't do anything to fix that unhappiness in themselves. So they judge and they, you know... They try to control, they try to put people down, to give themselves some self-importance because they can beat up some woman or, you know, torture somebody. I mean, it's just stupid, the whole thing, you know? It's beyond, it's beyond humanity. It's just stupid. It's very insecure people that don't know any other way to touch the world. And I think one has to have compassion for those people. They're so sick. 
that they don't know how to love. They don't know how to open inside. And I don't know. I, I, I don't know. You know, it's like asking about politics. I don't know. I mean, look, I, all this shit goes on in the world. And I either get swept away in it and angry and upset. Or what can I do, you know, to allow this nonsense that goes on in the world help me as a human being to grow? And I prefer that answer to getting upset because people are racially, you know, they're racist, they're misogynist, they're all this kind of crap, you know, that goes on. What can I do to grow, to become more than those people? You know, and, you know, I know I can't control them, but I know I can grow in myself. And maybe through growing in myself, I can touch another human being and help them to grow in themselves. So I don't really know the answer to that, why people do it. No, you know, go see some psychologist and they'll give you an explanation. But it goes on in the world and I have to deal with it. I have to deal with crazy people being elected president through this country. <laughs> you know, I have to deal with this every day. What am I going to do? Get upset? All right, what can I learn? How can I grow to where this situation, you know, helps me get closer to my spiritual enlightenment? How can I have compassion instead of anger? And I think to me, I don't, and, and I, I, after all these years of doing this kind of practice, I don't know any other way to approach the world. It's so crazy. And the stuff that goes on is so sick that I can't allow it to suck my life out of me. Can't allow it. I have to grow because of it. I have to become more of a human being because of that. Instead of Allowing that, you know, revenge and anger, and, you know. I mean, look what goes on in, in the Middle East. It's all about anger and revenge and religion and, you know, 45,000 people have died. You know, it's just stupid. And the, the answer is so simple. But people would rather kill each other than work on themselves. People would rather you know, torture women that work on themselves and grow and find a way to let another human being live. That's it. That's all this gay, straight, you know, LBTQFR, whatever it is, you know? I mean, all of that stuff is just superficial bullshit that people attach themselves to because they don't want to do work inside themselves to truly tap the deepest elements of their humanity. And if they tap that, all of these things disappear. They just disappear. And people can hug each other instead of putting each other down because somebody was born a woman or born gay or born, you know, a lesbian or born whatever, you know? It's all just stupid. And it all reflects the fact that people do not work on themselves. <clears throat> they don't develop their humanity. So you have all this nonsense. And it's very dangerous. I mean, look at 45,000 people have been killed in the Middle East. Just stupid. And these people could be doing business with each other. They could be sitting around, you know, having meals and restaurants together. And meanwhile, they're killing each other. It's just stupid. And why? Because none of those people are working on themselves to develop their humanity. And in the midst of it, you know, little kids get killed and people who are totally innocent get killed, you know? And all it would take were people to develop their humanity, to discover that we're all just people, human beings.
And I'll tell you, frankly, none of that stuff is going to go away until people do the work they have to do on themselves. They have to connect with spirit. They have to connect with God. They have to connect, even if they don't believe in God, you know, they got to connect with something higher than themselves that nurtures them and that opens their hearts and, and allows them to be in touch with the highest levels of their own humanity. Then misogyny would disappear. Racism would disappear. Anger, what people's sexual preferences would disappear. You know, invite me to your wedding instead of, you know, <laughs> I'm going to pass laws to keep you from getting married. It's also stupid. And it's just a lack of humanity. I don't have an answer. Oh, I gave an answer. I think it's a pretty good one, actually. <laughs> but I don't have an answer. Why? You know, everybody needs something to be crazy about. People are misogynists, you know. Woman is a slave. I got to torture. No, woman is a beautiful creature. A man is a beautiful creature. And without men and women, there is no future generation, for God's sake. <laughs> Nobody is born. Thank you, Stuart. You're welcome. You're welcome. I mean, we live in very difficult times, you know? I mean, there's so much nonsense that goes on that, that I just am so grateful that I can sit and do this work with all of you for an hour and do work that can help me develop my humanity. Help me to keep from being prejudiced. I mean, I knew when I was a kid, I lived in a neighborhood, which when I was very young, it was just an all kind of white neighborhood. A lot of Jewish people used to live there, you know, and, and you know, but I would go to school and it was this completely interracial school. You know, they were, Black, you know, African Americans, there were Puerto Ricans, there were Latinos, there were Oriental people. I mean, every day I was, I, I went in, in the middle of all that. You know, and at the same time, I would hear people, oh my God, an African American person has moved into the neighborhood. I'm moving to Pelham Parkway. <laughs> I used to hear this shit when I was younger. I'm moving to Riverdale because an African American person has just moved into my. You know, and I would go, my God, you know. And when I was a kid, some of my best friends were African-American kids. They were my class. And we used to play basketball together. I never could understand it. Also stupid, and and I'll get just to finish this. Do it. Get finished with this. It really has only to do with one thing: the lack of people doing work on themselves to develop their humanity. That's all it has to do with. People have no training. They have no capacity to open inside. They have no connection with God, with spirit, with higher energy. There's no real love inside them. There's no joy. They're completely unhappy people. And they take it out on other people because of the color, their, you know, their gender, their religion, their, you know, it's just, it's all dumb, you know. But it's going to go on for the rest of my life. And I think for the rest of the life of everybody sitting here, we have to learn to get bigger than it. That's all. We have to learn to get bigger than them. I mean, I was I just I was thinking the other day about people that live in a place like Texas, you know, 
a woman, you know, where they have all these laws against, you know, um, all these sexual things, you know, about, God, I forgot the word. Anyway, all these laws, you know? And I mean, if I was a woman living in Texas, you know, when I was 22 years old, and I was afraid that I could possibly get pregnant and I couldn't go to a doctor to have an abortion. I mean, I would move somewhere else. And it would be wonderful if all the women in Texas moved to California and see what the Texans would do. <laughs> they all left, went to New York, to California, where at least there's some sensibility about abortion, you know, and women's rights. I mean, you see how fast Texas would change. I think another good idea would be for every Latin American for one year to go back to South and Central America and leave America without Latin Americans and see how fast the economy would just collapse in this country. <laughs> you know, wonderful idea. You don't have to kick us out. We're all leaving. <laughs> you figure it out without us being here. <laughs> But nobody thinks that way, you know. Everybody thinks anyway. Forget it. Does anyone else have a question you would like to ask? Stuart, I have a question, it's Jason. Yes. Yes. Um, could you talk a little about Rudy Rudy's uh, play, playful nature? Rudy's playful nature. Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, hanging around with Rudy was, you know, it was a kick. He was fun. He laughed. He really didn't like any bullshit, but he was able to make laugh at it and not people put people down. You know, and he, he had a great sense of humor, Rudy. He was wonderful. I remember he was fasting and he was fasting. And he always threatened me, one day I'll be as skinny as you, Stuart. You know, and he was on this fast, a grape juice fast they used to do. And remember, we pulled up, the car broke down on our way to Big Indian, and we pulled up in, in a parking lot in front of a pizza parlor. And he looked out, out the window and he saw that he said, it must be God's will. And he went and broke his fast on a slice of pizza. I'll never forget that. I, I laughed so hard. It was just, you know, he, he had a great sense of humor and a great uh, ability of looking at all the bullshit in the world and finding something funny about it. I mean, even with Muktananda, when Muktananda made everybody become a celibate, we all became vegetarians and celibate. We would go to Chinatown and look at the menu and try to pick out the food that we could eat, not eat, and, and laughing while we were doing it, you know? And I'll never forget, I was working, you know, renovating a guy's gallery, you know, and Rudy came down, I was he's standing and talking, and, and he said, you know, Muktananda, he said, I, I, I've become a celibate, you know? But Stuart, it doesn't mean I can't give somebody else an orgasm. And to look at it that way, I mean, it just is, I mean, it's funny, you know, it's just like looking at all the bullshit and saying, so bullshit. Told Muktananda, I can't, you know, I can't eat cows because cows don't eat meat. And we're driving through the world of animals in Dallas and a lion walks across our road, you know? And Rudy looked at Muktananda and said, you know, Baba, I'm going to have a lion steak tonight. <laughs> you know, I mean, he just had this way of seeing the nonsense in the world and turning it into something tongue in cheek. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. And he also liked Roadrunner cartoons. Really. <laughs> Every morning, we come down for breakfast to the house, and the, the television is on, and we're watching Roadrunner cartoons, you know. I mean, he was a kick, he was a kid. At the same time, most conscious, smartest, powerful human being I'd ever spent time with in my life. And part of what really made it bearable and me capable of dealing with it was that 
it it wasn't just being angry at somebody because they did something stupid. It was done with love. It was done because he really cared about the person and wanted the person to grow up. And that was something that I learned from Rudy, how to be upset at somebody, but to do it in a way where I really cared about the person and I wanted them to grow up. It was a real playful side of Rudy. It was unbelievable, you know? Thank you, sir. And I loved it. And yet he used to, you know, used to kick the crap out of me all the time. <laughs> and five minutes later, he was hugging me and telling me I'm his best student. You know, I mean, it was ridiculous, you know? And I, but I learned and I grew. And I, uh, this innocent, totally insecure human being called Stuart Perrin, when I was younger, you know, became a human being. And without Rudy, that would have never happened. Same time, we went to every Chinese restaurant in Chinatown and and if he really liked a restaurant, we would go back there every night until we had every dish on the menu. I mean, it was incredible. I mean, hanging out with him was a kick. It was really a kick. And that that's some of it. I mean, I, there are a million things that would come to mind if I kept talking about this that used to take place in the presence of Rudy. And that was part of my training, you know, being able to talk to somebody about nonsense they're doing, you know, and not put them down. Not put them down. Do it because you really love them, you know, and you want them to get to a place where they will grow up. And their humanity gets developed inside them. This I learned from Rudy. Does anyone else have a question they would like? Okay, there'll be meditation on Sunday. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you for your questions and for being part of this. You know, this incredible hour we spend together, which is like nothing on the earth, you know? And I just am very grateful to each and every one of you to sit here and do this with you. So God bless you all. And there'll be meditation again on Sunday. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Good night.